know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. The fanatic, but we keep it 100, keep it real. That's the only way we know how to be. Talking that sports talk, you know what I'm saying? Straight out of South Carolina, upstate, yeah. it's 64. Yeah. yeah, the F A N A T T I C, the fanatic, where we keep it OG. We talking sports, so I call it. Welcome into the fanatic, a sports channel for sports fans by a sports fan. It's your boy, Coach I. All right, man, we're in here for our Notre Dame Fighting Irish season preview with my man Christian. He's back. He uh, helped us out last year. He brings some good knowledge of the Notre Dame program, and uh, we're going to get it on again today. What's going on, Christian? Uh, nothing much, you know, just living the home life with the you know, crazy kids, crazy household. But other than that, everything's good. Nah. I, 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 love, I love having my family around me. My uh, oldest is getting into, into sports, like uh, – he really wants to start watching everything Notre Dame, so must be doing something right. That's right, man. Start them young, raise them right, man. Get them into it already, man. So we just gonna touch on some Notre Dame, man. Notre Dame's been pretty hot in recruiting here. Uh, yeah. we'll, you know, what I'm saying Marcus Freeman, man. We'll touch on some key returners, some losses. We'll touch on the schedule preview. Uh, Marcus Freeman's first full year. I mean, he uh, has been with the staff already, uh, yeah, but he's the head honcho now. And then we'll get your predictions, man. Get you online telling us what you think Notre Dame is going to be today. Before we jump in, man, today the coaches poll came out. The official preseason coaches poll came out. Notre Dame is five. How you feeling about that? I think that's about right. That's that's where I kind of have them slated. Um, I have enough questions uh, on the team that I'm not super confident that they'll be higher than that. Um, but I am confident in the team. I just got to see how they play out. I mean, fall practice started on Friday, so that's going to help answer a lot of questions. That's true. That's true. Uh, practice, fall practice is here, man. Talking season is over, and I'm glad for it because oh, yeah. the actual games will start here. And I mean, technically, week zero starts on August the 27th, which I'm happy about. I'll be watching, even though there's no. I watched the Nebraska Northwestern game. I think it's over in Ireland or somewhere. I don't know. I don't care. I just want some football. <laughs> yeah, just give me all the football I can get. That's what exactly. That's all I want. Exactly. So let's get into the key uh, returners and losses, man. Um, you guys had a good year last year. You were eleven and one in the regular season with a lost uh, lost at home to Cincy, and then you finished the year out in the college football playoff. Uh, I mean, us. Uh, what they call the uh, this, uh, the it was the Fiesta Bowl. Yeah, the Fiesta, not the playoff, but the New Year Six. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. New Year yep. Six. Hey, the Fiesta yep. Bowl with a loss to Oklahoma State, who also had a good year. You guys, uh, mm-hmm. quarterback Jack Cohn is gone, uh, but you got Tyler mm-hmm. Buckner. Uh, Buckner's mm-hmm. probably a better runner, but not the same level of passer. We'll see about that. The main difference I think this year is Kelly is out and Freeman is in. What are your feelings about that? Did you like Kelly while he was at Notre Dame? <laughs> uh, I liked what he did for okay. the program. Uh, as a person, he was very conceited, I guess would be the word to use. Uh, it's yeah. all about me, me, me. Um, yeah. There was uh, a lot of reports are coming out now about how the players uh, didn't really like him. He wasn't really around a whole lot. Uh, so it it basically the players were playing for themselves uh, so it I just kind of made things interesting um i heard some things that uh practice wise uh, i don't want to get too much into it but basically he's, he's just not really yeah a people first kind of guy you know, yeah he's a, I can see what that. Is, so. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Like you said, he was good what, at what he did. He won a lot of games at Notre Dame. Uh, I think mm-hmm. uh, all time winning is so. Uh, yeah, you but have Freeman, to for that. Yeah, but Freeman seems more likable for for the lack of anything else. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, and, and I mean, it's showing in recruiting. I mean, you guys are hiding recruiting, like I said earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think Marcus Freeman is more of a people person. So we'll see how he is at the top spot. We know he's a good D coordinator, but we'll see what he is at the top spot this year, man. Um, you guys return all your wide receivers except for, was it Kevin Austin? Um, yep. You bring back tight end uh, Michael Mayer. Should be one oh, of the man. best in the nation. Um, mm-hmm. So how you feeling about uh, any anybody that you lost maybe on the offensive line or defensive line that you uh, think is going to be hard to replace? 
Um, probably Kurt Heinisch. Uh, he was a nose tackle. He was just a space eater, but he was consistent. Uh, you know, he was a four-year player. Uh, no, actually five-year player. He put a lot of, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into the program. Uh, so he's going to be missed. And then our big end, uh, Myron Tungavai Lolo Mosa. He's, he, uh, he graduated, so he's gone. I think he got signed with the Raiders. I don't know. Um, yeah, anyway, undrafted agent, uh, free agent. Uh, so I'm looking forward to see what those guys can do in the league. Um, as far as the offensive line, we lost Kane Madden. Uh, he was he was an All American for Marshall uh, when we yeah. transferred in, and then our <laughs> offensive line coach did nothing to help him out, and that, <laughs> that coach is now gone. So there's a whole list of coaches that I'm glad are gone. Uh, new, you know, new guys in. Uh, anyway, but with those guys leaving, we're going to see a nice uptick, I think, in physicality along the the uh, line of scrimmage. Yeah. So you'll see you'll see some guys on defense like. Um, Isaiah Foskey, obviously, he's a household name already. He's projected to be a first rounder. Uh, Jason, Justin, and Jason Adamalola, they're actually twins. Uh, mm-hmm. One plays defensive tackle, the other one is a uh, weak tight end as well. Um, I think the thing you got to watch out for though is the linebacker core. So we had a guy who was going to be a uh, projected starter last year, but he ended up getting injured, was out for the entire year, Maris Leopold. Uh, that dude. He's, he's going to be really good. I, I would not be surprised if he was uh, a runner-up in the uh, uh, best linebacker the, award. Buckus, the Buckus Award. Yeah, yep. Buckus. Thank you. I, I should know that because Notre Dame's had three winners in the past ten years. Um, hey. <laughs> so, but it, it's good. Um, I think we return a lot of talent, a lot of experience. Uh, you know, one of the questions is the secondary. Uh, yeah. Just with the departure of uh, Carl Hamilton, just everything that he brought. Uh, but luckily, we got another All American in. His name is Brandon Joseph. He's a transfer from Northwestern. Uh, yep. He didn't. He wasn't a, a real fan of how they ran the defense last time they, uh, last year at Northwestern. So he's pretty excited to be playing against some, uh, or playing with some uh, pretty skilled players. Uh, um, an makes athletic, a, fast make- defense. Makes a difference. Makes a difference. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that on defense, that's going to be the biggest challenge is replacing Kyle Hamilton. He was a Mr. All Everything safety mm-hmm. type. So, a uh, yep. good thing you guys were able to bring in Brandon Joseph to uh, kind of fill that void. Uh, what about running mm-hmm. back? How are you feeling about the uh, backfield? So, I love Kyle Williams. He was absolutely one of my favorites to watch in a long time to bring back to Notre Dame. Uh, we actually have a three headed monster. Uh, so Chris Tyree, he's he's pretty dynamic. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Wisconsin game when Gus Johnson called his kick six. Yeah. Um, and then there was uh, so he's just and then he had an awesome just um, slip out of the backfield uh, when Oklahoma State was on an all-out blitz and just took it to the house for 50 yards. And uh, but uh, for the running backs, uh, Chris Tyree obviously, uh, mm-hmm. Logan Diggs, he he showed some flashes uh, being a freshman last year. Uh, but one I'm actually real excited about is Andre Testame. He he got a little bit of action against Georgia Tech, <clears throat> mm-hmm. but he is he's like Derek Henry incarnate. Like he's just a big dude, and he's just looking to maul people. And he's actually got some pretty agile feet too. He's he's actually uh, our new running backs coach, Dylan McCullough. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he's pretty excited about what he'll bring to the table. Well, having a veteran like Chris Tyree back there to help him out, uh, that should be good. Um, Derrick Henry comparison. Hmm, that's a that's a tall Well, I'm not saying he is Derrick Henry. I know, I'm just saying if he's anything half of what Derrick Henry was, he's going to be good. <laughs> oh, Derrick Henry. Henry is one of no, the best man. to do it. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and jump into the schedule, man. Uh, last year, you guys kind of started off kind of slow. You had two close victories, one over Florida State, one over Toledo. And then from there, outside of the two losses, you guys pretty much uh, handled everybody, you know, pretty handedly. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This year, though, you don't have that. Uh, now, now, granted, Florida State is power five. They're ACC. But we all know Florida State's not the Florida State that they used to be. This year, mm-hmm. you start out at the horseshoe. <laughs> so it's like you got to get ready right now not to say that they can't lose at the horseshoe because we watched Oregon do it last year without Kayvon Thibodeau so uh, mm-hmm. how you feeling about that game uh, so this game I'm 
like super excited for it. Obviously, right now, I'm like, oh yeah, full confidence. I know Notre Dame can be Ohio State. I'm sure when the game gets closer, I'll become more reserved. Because um, <laughs> Ohio State, I mean, they've got weapons. I mean, obviously, CJ Stroud, Jackson uh, Smith, and Goodwill. Uh, they have Luca Kidd, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. I mean, they've got, they've got some dudes. Um, yeah, they it's do. It's on heaven, and I can't forget about him. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, they're going to be tough to stop on offense. Uh, they picked up uh, Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator mm-hmm. from Oklahoma State. Because their defense was trash last year. And hopefully he you know he can help them out. Uh, but being the first game of the season, uh, I don't know that Knowles is going to have his defense uh, fully in place. I mean, it took Marcus Freeman half a year, and, and we know that Marcus Freeman was a good DC. Yeah. And I, I would say that comparably they've had – Similar talent, I mean, Ohio State has a little more, so I, I anticipate them catching on a little sooner, but still, first game, uh, it's, it's going to be a big one, and hey, how is Tyler Buckner, uh, what's he going to do, uh, you know, how is he going to perform in the whole shoe, and that's probably the biggest venue he's ever played in in his life, uh, but all yeah. the reports, you know, coming out, is he, I mean, he's an even field kid, he knows, he knows what it's like to play on big stages, he doesn't let it shake him, he's got, he's got the moxie, um, so, it, it, you know, obviously in his skill, he, he just let that speak for itself. Uh, so it's just depending on what he can do. Uh, so how can the offense um, keep up with Ohio State's offense and Notre Dame's yes. defense you know, stop them at all? So yeah. that, that's going to be a tough one. Right now, uh, I'm thinking that Notre Dame can pull out the victory. It's going to be hard fought. Uh, I'm not saying that it's absolute, but it's one that I believe is the can. I yeah, I, I think and a half points uh, Wow, I think for anybody playing Ohio State uh, any year, especially this year, you know, with CJ, like you say, CJ Stroud and all those weapons at wide receiver, not to mention Julian Fleming, who hasn't even scratched the surface oh, yet. Yeah. But uh, the key and Trayvon Henderson being one of the best backs in America, regardless mm-hmm. of what their defense does, I mean, I think the key would be can you score enough points to beat. Ohio State because it's not like anybody's going to totally shut them down not to say that you can't make some key stops but that offense is going to be one of the best so I think that's the key to it but after that you get you know you get Marshall and you get California come California Bears coming in and then you're at North Carolina after those first four games to be successful in the season what are you thinking like those first four games you, you, you do you need to be undefeated or can you take that to, can you take a possible loss to ohio state and be three and one if we if i think we can take that possible uh, loss to ohio state uh, we just got to win out uh, yeah so you can't i mean obviously you're losing at ohio state so that really that kind of goes in order to favor but as long as you don't get blown out so you just got to win out uh the biggest thing that I kind of want to look is, hey, the defense is still solid like it has been since 2017, whenever they fired Brandon Lane Quarter. Uh, <laughs> joke. What's um, crazy but, uh, is he was super good when he was at Georgia back in yeah, the early 2000s. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't even make sense to me. Uh, and then, hey, what is, you know, how's the offense look? Uh, there's a lot of young talent, but. Um, we, we go behind an uh, experienced offensive line, you know, probably one of the best, that's probably top five in my opinion, just okay. with who they return, how many starts they return, and, um, you know, how they look, are they running the ball, Tyler Buckner living up to expectations, um, that kind of thing, I think that's what I'm looking for in the future, but they're succeeding on both sides. Okay, then you get a, a, a early uh, bye, and then you got mm-hmm. the next the next four, I would say, like, of course, Stanford, Notre Dame, Stanford, you know, not to say Stanford can't beat y'all, but I think top to bottom, you guys' roster is just better than Stanford. Uh, it's at Notre Dame. I think you guys are handling it. The, the game that I'm going to be watching for is the BYU game. It's, it's going to be played in Vegas, and I think you guys will win, but I could see that one being closer than everybody expects it to be. I think BYU is returning a lot of people, and I think they're, they're pretty good. I think you guys are better. But I think BYU BYU is going to be a victim of their schedule. <laughs> they they schedule like a lot of hard people this year. So, but uh, of those four games, uh, are you pretty confident on all those? Or are you or are you thinking anything other other than what I just said? No, I mean Stanford has been on the decline uh, for a while now, and I just yeah, I, I, they're not who they were. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, I mean, I mean obviously. 
UNLV, Syracuse, I mean, those games are <laughs> got yeah. easy wins. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want to say easy wins, but, you know, they, they're wins. Uh, BYU, though, you're right. I mean, they, I think they're number one, or at least close to number one in the nation in returning, returning roster talent. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, that's going to be a tough game. And, I mean, in, it's in Las Vegas, and, and it's just, uh, I think it's at the Raiders Stadium, and yep. it's just going to be an awesome event. Uh, did you get a chance to see the uh, the uniform reveal that Notre Dame did? No. Oh man, it, it was awesome. They, so they did their uniform reveal, but they did it to the tune of uh, like a Hangover parody, and so uh, <laughs> it, it, was, it was good. Oh, you know what? I caught the end of it. I was like, uh, I was adjusting my volume. I was on my phone. I was adjusting my volume. I did catch the end of it. You're right. It was nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I seen, I seen the, the end of it. <laughs> those uniforms are nice. I mean, they're all white, nice and yep. green with the gold, uh, the golden domes on the shoulder. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's they're nice. So you get through that four game stretch, possibly either eight and zero, seven and one. Worst case scenario, six and two. Um, but I think more like seven and one. He got Clemson. He got Clemson coming into Notre Dame. I think Ohio State and Clemson are going to be the two games that define Notre Dame season. And like I say, if I had to pick a third game, it would be. I mean, well, I mean, you got USC at the end of the year. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, what about Clemson, man? Clemson has some quarterback issues, but. That defense is probably going to be the best defense in the nation, to be honest. Oh, I 100% agree. I mean, that, <laughs> just their defensive line alone is insane. I mean, they've got at least two or three first rounders on it. I mean, it's Tyler Davis, Miles Murphy, uh, Brian, Brian Brzee. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, just, it's insane. Uh, <laughs> it, it's just, I mean, it's just the normal Clemson bunch of defense. They're going to be. It's gonna be tough. Uh, yeah. that. It's, we're not gonna see a you know score fest like we did the last time they came in Notre Dame. Yeah, I don't um, think so. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a nice defensive battle. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm curious to see what you know who comes out. Um, whether it's DJ Uyunglele or um, uh, is it Cade Klubnik, right? Cade there, Klubnik, um, yep. Cade yeah. Klubnik, from all accounts around here in South Carolina. Has been looking good in practice, but it's still DJ's job as of now. I, I mean, I have a lot of respect for DJ. I don't know what happened last year, but um, I, I'm, I'm curious to see if he can make a rebound there because I, I believe that he has that talent. I think he just might have gotten into his head. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It didn't help. That first game didn't help him out. He had a little PTSD, and then his, his weapons didn't help him out either. So it's yeah, going to be interesting to see. Yeah, yeah t- towards the time. towards the end, uh, their running game came on. Their wide receiver never really kind of stepped up like the Clemson wide receivers that we're used to, like the 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 first two year Justin Ross, the T Higgins, the Mari mm-hmm. Rogers, the you know Hunter Renfro's. None of those guys really stepped up for him. So I mean, yeah, it was some of his fault, but I think his weapons had something to do with that as well. And then after that, of course, you play the game against the yearly game against Navy. You got Boston College, and then you finish at the Coliseum. Now we all been hearing the hype on the USC train this year, man. Uh, they got some offensive skill skill players. Uh, I'm interested to see what their line looks like and their defense. But when's the last time USC beat Notre Dame? Uh, 2016. Mm, been a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah there's been a counter, and it's that's over 2,000 days. I know that. Yeah, so you guys got the schedule where you book in with uh, Ohio State and USC, which with Clemson snuggled in the middle. <laughs> yeah, that, those you know we faced the two best offenses on, on either side, like you said. I'm I'm curious though because like even Boston College is going to be sneaky good this year because um, they had a good quarterback. Phil Jakovic, will, yeah, Phil Jakovic will be back, so I think that they'll be pretty decent. But yeah, USC. Uh, obviously, their offensive firepower, like you said, and that they'll have. I mean, see how much money they, they could buy, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So. <laughs> uh, no, um, but the, I don't know how, I'm, how I feel about them yet. I think Lincoln Riley is a good fit there. Um, yeah. But I'm not, I don't think that they're going to be going to the playoffs, like, you know, all these pundits are saying. It's because their defense is garbage. So bad last year. Yeah. Um, and and, uh, and even when uh, Lincoln Riley was at Oklahoma, 
he inherited already a, a built program, and I felt like he didn't go anywhere with that. I got you. I mean, yeah, he had he had amazing defense. The guys in the front on offense was inside. He's an offensive genius, but when it comes to defense, it hasn't really clicked. Um, so I'm kind of curious as what what will happen. I mean, obviously, Heisman winners at, at quarterback. I think they just can't be good out. <laughs> never, never got over the hump. I mean, Oklahoma True. had worse losses in the playoffs than Notre Dame did. <laughs> yeah, they both got, they both have gotten there, just like you say, not over the hump, man. So, I mean, this is one year I don't think it'll be any question when it comes to the playoff committee if Notre Dame is in the talks at the end. There definitely won't be a schedule, uh, lack of schedule, uh, strength of schedule conversation or anything like that. Um, so with this schedule, with it being Freeman's first year, what is the expectation around the Notre Dame fan base? Are are we expecting, or or I guess I said, what are you hoping for? Um, I know it's just, I know you guys got a good team, but is he still a first year head coach? You know what I'm saying? So, what what are you guys looking at this year as far as what you want from Freeman? Um, so I think Vegas has it at eight and a half wins, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I think it's going to be over that for sure. Uh, so. I guess people around here, it kind of depends on who you ask. Um, I would say that nine and three is probably a lot of things have to go wrong. Um, okay. You know, Tyler Buckner didn't pay no. Wide receivers got hurt. You know, uh, playmakers on defense got hurt. I mean, a lot of things would have had to go wrong for them to be nine and three. Um, so my feeling on it, uh, as, it, as it stands right now, I think they're going to finish 11-1. Uh, okay. I think I think they're going to win at Ohio State, but then I think they might drop a game to BYU or to Clemson, just because I think that obviously BYU being just all around experience, uh, and yeah. Clemson with, with a really good defense, um, I think that that might be difficult for first year starting quarterback. But the thing about Freeman is, yeah, he's a first uh, year head coach, but I mean, so is Ryan Day, who went undefeated. <laughs> I mean, uh, who uh, Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, I think, finished 10 and 2. Um, and uh, I think Oklahoma had it down here before that, so it's like he improved. So, I mean, it, I think that he surrounded himself with enough coaches that have had uh, prior head coaching experience or hard just experience in general uh, that he's going to lean on. And he's, he's not like Brian Kelly was, his way or the highway. He really, like, he really listens to his coaches. Kind of, you know, takes to heart what they have to say. So, Al Golden just came from, you know, a Super Bowl uh, runner up team to coach his defense. And obviously, he has prior head coaching experience. And he just said, Hey, this is what we do in the NFL. You know, we run red zone to start spring practice and then we just kind of go from there. And that's what they've been doing. So, he's, well, he's a, you listen. Okay, and I'm thinking, uh, like you said, those games you called out are the games that I'm looking forward to, the Ohio State, the USC, the Clemson, of course, the, definitely the BYU. But, again, uh, I don't think Boston College is a better team, but Phil Jakovic is uh, a good quarterback. Um, so Vegas gave you guys eight and a half. So we'll go game by game. And, of course, the way they do for the people watching, the way they do uh, those totals is you get a point for a win, a half for a toss-up, and none for a uh, um, a loss. So we'll go game by game, and you tell me whether it's a, a win, a toss-up, or a loss. Okay. All right, so Ohio win. State. Win. All right. Marshall. Win. California. Win. North Carolina. Win. BYU. Lost. Okay. Uh, Stanford. Win. Uh, UNLV. Win. Syracuse. Win. Clemson. Win. Ooh. Navy. Win. (laughs) Boston College. Win. And then at the Coliseum versus the Trojans. Win. All right, so like you said, eleven and one. Oh, I'm down here in South Carolina. It's gonna be some Clemson fans to take take. Uh, don't take too kindly when they watch. I know. The you know, I, I have a lot of respect for Clemson. I, I really do like them. I like uh, what Dabo is doing. Um, you know, they got a really good defense. Um, I just, uh, I'm, I have a lot of questions about their 
above her offense still, um, whether or not DJ can come back. So I, I feel confident that like Notre Dame can at least match them. Yeah. Um, because I think it's just going to be a defensive slugfest, and I think with Notre Dame being at home, I think that's what gets them, gives them the win. That's what I was going to say. You guys being at home uh, would give you the slight edge, uh, even if it was, you know, like a toss up. Because if it was at Clemson, I'd probably just say Clemson wins just because, not just because mm-hmm. it's Clemson, but they haven't, they've not they only lost one since 2016 at the house. So mm-hmm. it's hard to win at Clemson, man. Um, mm-hmm. And like you said, uh, now by that time in November, that's first Saturday in November, if they still got offensive questions, then <laughs> it <laughs> definitely is going to be a, a win for Notre Dame. They definitely got to get their offense right, man. But any yeah. other feelings you got for the season, man? Uh, I know, like I said, it's a lot of excitement around the program with um, with Marcus Freeman coming in and, and mm-hmm. Kelly on his way out. Uh, anything else you got on it? Um, you know, I know I kind of mentioned it before, but the way that Freeman has built his staff, I, I think he's really set them up for success because he brought back Gary Heastman, who is a Joe Moore win, award-winning coach. Um, he's got all really good players to coach up um Pat, you know jared patterson he's going to probably be a high you know if not first rounder definitely second rounder and then he's got two really young uh tackles who are starting their sophomore seasons but both are already projecting first round just because of the size and their ability um lorenzo styles uh, we didn't really touch on wide receiver much but he is he's going to be a dude he's really good heard a lot of good things about their true freshman uh Tobias Merriweather is going to be really good. Um, they've got, you know, good experienced guys to help out them out. And I think Tyler Buckner really is going to surprise a lot of people with his, his style mm-hmm. of play and how well he does. Um, like I said, um, Freeman, you know, he's the dude. He's the guy everybody wanted. I got him. I mean, just seeing that locker room video when he gets the knock to the team was just yeah, they was hype. So good. <laughs> was good. And I just think that at the whole team and they're just excited to play for a coach who loves them uh who's there with them i mean every day even during workouts and you know the tough stuff he's, he's right next to him just building them up and I mean, that's, that's all you can ask for in a head coach so it's just all about how can he handle game, game day decisions and i think the rest of it he's yeah man he's a, he yeah. really lives, lives with integrity and the way he coaches too and can't, can't ask for much more than that that's right, man. Marcus Freeman, first full year as the – like he is, like I said, he had the bowl game, but this is his first year at the helm. He's been at Notre Dame. A lot of excitement, got a lot of talent. Uh, it's going to be interesting, man. So uh, hopefully Notre Dame, uh, even if it ain't this year, maybe – I think Freeman is the guy to get over the hump like Kelly couldn't do, you know what I'm saying? Kelly can mm-hmm. win games, but he could never get on the, over the hump. I think Freeman, it, you know, as long as he keeps recruiting the way he's recruiting, uh, is that definitely you got to have the Jimmys and Joes, man. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> but we appreciate you coming on, Christian, man, giving us that Notre Dame inside, man. Uh, a couple of those big games at Ohio State, uh, Clemson, we probably have to get you back on, man, and get some in-depth uh, breakdown on what you see coming forward on those games, man. But uh, for Christian, man, this is Coach I and Fanatic, man. Got it jumping like it's that valley. Yeah. I call yeah. my dogs out the pound. Let's go eat. Turn on the fan at it. Yeah. Let's have a debate. Yeah. Who really hold down the southeast from state to state? What team hungry gonna eat everything up off they plate?